This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Chapter 5 So far we have considered government as it is, as it must of a necessity be in a society based on privilege, exploitation, and the oppression of man by man, on the conflict of interests, on the intrasocial struggle, in a word, on individual property. We have seen how this state of conflict, far from being a necessary condition in man's existence, is against the interests both of individuals and mankind. We have seen how cooperation, solidarity, is the law of human progress and have concluded that by abolishing private property and all rule over man, government loses its reason for existing and must be abolished. We might be told, however, but once the principle on which social organization is based today, we're about to be... Ch we're were to be changed and solidarity were to replace struggle and common property were to take over from private property, government would change its nature and from being the protector and the representative of the interests of a class, since classes would no longer exist, would become the representative of the interests of society as a whole. Its role would be to provide and regulate social cooperation in the interests of all, to defend society from any direct attempts to reintroduce privilege, to forestall and suppress attempts from whatever court against the life, the well-being, and freedom of each one of us. Quote, there are in society some offices too important and requiring too much attention and continuity for them to be left to the free will of individuals without the danger of seeing everything thrown into confusion. Who would organize and guarantee if there were no government, uh, food supplies, distribution, health services, the post and telegram services, and the railways? etc. Who would look after public education? Who would undertake those vast exploratory projects, land drainage schemes, scientific research, which transforms the face of the earth and increases man's power a hundredfold? Who would watch over the, con the conservation and development of social wealth to pass it on, enrich and improve for future generations? Who would have to a mandate to prevent and punish crime that is antisocial actions? And what of those who fall short of the law of solidarity and don't want to work? And those who are to spread disease in a country and refuse to take the kinds of hygiene precautions recognized as useful by science? And supposing there were some people sane or insane who wanted to set fires to the harvest, sexually assault children, or take advantage of their strength to assault the weak, to destroy private property, abolish uh, and abolish existing governments without then creating a government which would organize social life and ensure social solidarity would not mean abolishing privilege and ushering a world of peace and well-being. It would instead mean the destruction of all social ties and, a, and drive mankind to barbarism towards the rule of each for himself, which is the triumph, firstly, of brute force and secondly, of economic privilege. End quote. Those are the objections the authoritarians face us with even when they are socialists. That is when they want to abolish private property and the class government which it gives rise to. We can answer that in the first place it is not true that once the social conditions are changed, the nature and the role of government would change. Organ and function are inseparable terms. Take away from an organ its function and either the organ dies or the function is reestablished. Put an army in a country in which there are neither reasons for nor fear of war, civil or external, and it'll provoke war, or if it does not succeed in its intentions, it will collapse. A police force, whether there are no crimes to solve or criminals to apprehend, will invent both or cease to exist. In France, there has existed centuries an institution, the Louvoterie, now incorporated in the forestry administration, the officials of which are entrusted with the task of destroying wolves and other harmful creatures. No one will be surprised to learn that it is just because of this institution exists that there are still wolves in France and in exceptional winters they play havoc. The publicly hardly worries about the wolves as there are the wolf exterminators who are there to deal with them. And these, uh, and these certainly hunt the wolves, but they do so intelligently, sparing the dens long enough for them to rear their young and so prevent the extermination of an interesting animal species. French peasants have, in fact, little confidence in these wolf catchers and consider them more as wolf preservers. And it's understandable. Uh, what would the lieutenants of the Louvre do if there were no more wolves? 
A government that is a group of people entrusted with making the laws and empowered to use the collective power to oblige each individual to obey them is already a privileged class and cut off from the people. As any, as any constituted body would do, it will instinctively seek to extend its powers to be beyond public control, to impose its own policies and give priority to its special interests. Having been put in a privileged position, the government is already at odds with the people whose strength it disposes of. In any case, even a government, even if a government wanted to, it could not please everybody. Even if it did manage to please a few, it would have to defend itself against the malcontents and would therefore need to get the support of one section of the people to do so. And then the old story of the privileged class which arises through the complicity of the government starts all over again. And in this instance, if it does not seize the land, it would certainly capture key posts specially created and would oppress and exploit no less than the capitalist class. The rulers accustomed to giving orders would not wish to be once more members of the public, and if they did not hold on to the power, they would at least make sure securing privileged positions for when they must hand over power to others. They would use every means available to those in power to have their friends elected as the successors who would then in their turn support and protect them. And thus, government would be passed to and fro in the same hands, and democracy, which is the alleged government of all, would end up, as usual, in an oligarchy, which is the government of a few, the government of a class. And what an all-powerful, oppressive, all-absorbing oligarchy must be one which has its at its service that at its disposal, all social wealth, all public service, from the food to the manufacture of matches, from the university to the music halls. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.